What is up, YouTube? Welcome to the airspace. Today, we are going to be painting up this right here. And we are going to be doing this in opaque grayscale. It cannot be easier. We're not going to need anything fancy. You're going to need a grayscale value finder. You can just search that term and find them on the internet. You can tell how much I take care of mine. And you're going to need some black and white paint maybe a little reducer and transparent base would be helpful I painted this one on poster board I don't recommend poster board if you're planning on keeping it anyway so we're gonna mix up colors by using our grayscale value finder in other words when you took this grayscale value finder and stuck it on there you say oh that matches up perfectly to a two then you're gonna match up some two paint let's roll into this we will match our colors by laying them in there, lining them up. And we will do that process. I'm not going to show it everywhere, but we will do that process throughout the entire video. This is how we match our color or our gray. Now we are going to print out a photo of our reference, and this is the reference I use for this. And then you can cut everything up and cut everything out. You'll see that I do not cut everything out in the, in the photo, but I will tell you as we go along, if you need to cut everything, cut everything. It is as simple as paint by numbers. You match the gray shade that you need for the area in which you are working on, and I'll show you the techniques we're gonna use to get there. Let's go back to work. So what I'm going to do, I pulled out these two pieces, cut them, pulled out these two pieces, and I've mixed, mixed up a tone that is a, almost as dark as that darkest tone. And so what I will do is I will blend and gradient out. I won't hit 100% opacity. you the difference between dark white and that and it's very obvious that we've actually put work in there a little bit of a darker tone and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these little veins in I will completely ignore the eyelashes for now so I've mixed up another darker color just darken my mix as I go along. Please enjoy this moment of radio silence. Now, this little sharp line I need here, of course I started freehanding it, and then I remembered I need to be showing. So you could take like a scrap piece of paper like that, come over here and just spray half on, half off the edge and we are going to take a pencil eraser and we are going to pull out the specular reflections what the heck is specular reflection right that's what you're thinking right now okay there are a couple of different types of reflections which we concern ourselves with there's actually three types of reflections when it comes to art there's glossy there is diffuse and there is specular specular reflection what it means is it refers to when when light hits a glossy surface it's going to bounce off at the same angle it comes in. So if you were standing here and the light came from here and hit my eyeball, which is glossy and wet, it would bounce back at the exact angle and show your light. That is what a specular reflection is. Skin has both specular and diffuse reflections. Diffuse reflections are when a surface is not perfectly smooth, the light scatters in all directions. Even though this piece of paper may appear somewhat smooth, light hits it and scatters in all directions. On the microscopic level, paper is very rough. Let's go back to work. Oh, I have cut out that very, very large highlight and reflection, and I'm going to use some Pevio drawing gum to fill that in to preserve that bright white. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of draw a couple things I want. So I have taken and rubbed pencil on the back of my eye. I'll 
on the back of the pupil of the eye. And I'm going to mark out some key points that I want to remember. Now, by using our magic and handy grayscale value finder, I have mixed up the lightest shade of gray within the iris of the eye. And I'm actually, I'm putting, of course, that pupil in there, but it's going to be much darker than that. I just put it in there so I don't lose it. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take something called Blackbeard Wheat, which could be found in any floral section. You guys can get a bundle of wires, whatever. I'm just using it for some extra texture. You can freehand it in there. I just wanna show you guys an easy way to do that. So I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to blend out. Of course, I'm doing a little bit of work with freehand as well, but it's really, really simple stuff. Okay, so I've cut out this one little section. Like I said, I'm not going to cut them all out. Keeping my in tone with trying to save some time, I'm going to put some of that back to the feet. I've mixed up a darker color. And I will put a little, use some of this freehand. I normally freehand all of them. Of course, we're gonna be really dark on the outer edge. And what I'll do is I will put it in now, but I'm still gonna come up with a darker color again. But I'm gonna go to each one of these little pieces and create a shadow. Now I'm going to use straight black transparent and a little bit of the transparent base, probably more transparent base than I'm going to use paint. And that allowed me to get a thin, very transparent, very controllable spray. Okay, because I have this thinned down with the transparent base, it's a little easier to control. And so I'm going to come in and start putting my pupil in. I want it to not be a perfect edge. That's why I did not use a shield right there. Now I'm going to get my shield back out that I've got from earlier. Now that I've got my dark mix. We're gonna catch it off of that edge. So see, I cut that little eye like that, and then I'm gonna use it there. And then I'm gonna just rotate that around the eye and create some of them same little shapes. And it won't be perfect, but nobody will really know unless you put the photo right next to the, you know, painting. So to save time, I'm just not gonna be perfect. We're just gonna use one. So, so we don't want that line so crisp, I'm going to go in here and chase it with a freehand. We are about a value 6 on the grayscale value finder right now. And the other way that you can do it is you can take a piece of paper, pick it up, or a freehand shield. Just make sure you pick it up off the edge just a little bit. Spray it, and it will leave a naturally diffuse edge so that it is not too crisp and stencil looking. Put some more of those lines in here. Of course, if you wanted to cut all that out and shield it, It would be more accurate for sure. And again, you do not have to do it. But in this particular case, I went ahead. I'm just going to freehand all these little textures in there because I really like freehanding. And oh, by the way, I am using the GSI Creos PS270 airbrush for this painting. I'll leave you guys a link if you want one. I'll leave you a link for the magnets and I'll leave you a link for the Bayo masking fluid too. Anything else that I use you want to know about, ask me. I'll get you a link. Anyway, let's go back to work. I'm using a transparent and now if we look back 
I'll pull out a reference photo. If we look back, notice we've got to put that really dark spot in, and that's going to be really dark up here. We'll have that one specular highlight. There are eyelashes, shadows that come down, and we will worry about them later. Going to remove my masking I put in there earlier. Bright highlight. And we'll pull that out. And then while I got my eraser out here, I've doubled the speed, so it's not that crazy. But I'm going to go in here and pop in a couple little highlights right there. And then what I'm going to do is surround some of them holes and give me that kind of stretchy, weird stretchy look thing they had going on in this eyeball, which is really cool. And as we get into our dark color, we'll reinforce those holes and everything will be fantastic so i came back in now i'm working with a transparent black and i'm just doing some light tinting around the edges okay since i said we're using the transparent black what i've done is i take my transparent base and this is a transparent black in the first place great text illustration is transparent black and i add like eight drops of this transparent one drop of this black and that gives me a very light shade without having to add too much reducer if you add too much reducer you start getting splatters and all those things matter of fact i didn't use any reducer at all so and that's out of a point too so we use that and it gives us a nice controlled easy to spray transparent and we're just going to do a little bit of glaze work here let's go back to work so bringing our reference back we're going to compare where we're at and so it looks like we got to go just a little bit darker in a couple of spots so we will take that transparent black as we were talking about i'm going to blend and shade there should be a little post next to that highlight right there because that is actually a window so we're going to go ahead and run that up and you may notice that's an actual person inside that dark shadow inside the pupil i did not exactly uh, follow that directly if you wanted to cut it out you could make a perfect little person while I got that transparent black out there, my darkest color, we're going to reinforce a couple of the spots, but not everywhere. Don't hit everything. You'll start flooding it out and ruin your entire picture. Then we add that little bit of shadow right there that comes underneath, comparing to our reference. And look what we got there. Didn't that really looking glassy? All right, we're starting to look really, really, really good right now, aren't we? So next, what we're going to do, we're going to get into the skin and how we're going to handle the skin and the skin textures. And I know you guys are really excited about that, but you're just going to have to wait another day or two before I release that video. There will be a part two because, you know, I'm kind of just like that. Uh, yeah, actually, really, I'm trying to keep the video a little bit short, but... I will have that video out by Saturday. So that's a good reason, if you're not, to subscribe to the channel because you know the video's coming out and you want to watch part two. And second, check your notifications because you're not going to get a notification if your notifications aren't turned on, right? Anyway, guys, I appreciate you. I'm Bill Kennedy with the Airspace, formerly W. Leon Artistry. We are the Airspace, and I appreciate you guys coming by. We love y'all. Y'all have a good one.